Hey everybody, Nick here. Just a quick video today on something I do in DaVinci Resolve these days that I've found to be just so extremely helpful. And maybe half of you are going to watch this video and say, everybody already knows this, move on. And maybe the other half of you are going to say, I've never thought about it this way, thanks for showing me this. Uh, really, the video isn't for either half or either perspective. It's really for me as I learn Resolve better and I learn to shoot and color grade better. So I love shooting on fast lenses, and one of the consequences of shooting on fast lenses is that wide open, they tend to vignette quite a bit. It's just a property of physics that's really hard to combat unless you use really, really large front elements, and because none of us wants to carry around a lens the size of a suitcase, we shoot and have a little bit of vignetting. And a lot of people will think, oh, to combat vignetting, I'm going to go to the vignette tool in in resolve and you know i'm gonna change it to you know where it's it's shining white light instead and i'll you know change this to soft light mode and you know i'm gonna drop the transparency until it's just right and this is not a bad way necessarily um but it's not the way that i like to deal with vignette in resolve um instead i like doing it with power windows so here is the the power window i made for this let me reset this uh, so i have in all of my power grades now this little vignette node it's usually off by default um, but I, i'll show you how i set it up so we start with a circle in the the power window no oh, it's not showing it to me okay if it's not showing up you go over here and make sure to turn it on um, and I, I drag it so that it's about this big, and then these handles control the feathering or the softness of that window. And then we want to click right here to invert the mask. And so now this is a vignette, uh, sorry, now this is a node in, in Resolve that is only affecting those areas that are being illuminated by this gradient circle. So I make it look something like this. And again, remember it's inverted. And now I'm gonna add uh, a gamma mapping because we're working in red, uh, red log, what are we in? Red log 3G10, I believe. Maybe I should check over here. Yes, okay. Um, and so we map the HDR wheels onto that gamma space and now it should accurately, you know, you map it to whatever camera you're working with or whatever you've changed with your, um, if you have a CST. And now I'm just going to add exposure because that's exactly what a vignette is. It's a loss of exposure. And so this lens in particular has a pretty hard vignette. It's probably like a whole stop or more. Um, and then depending on how, how you want to feather this or how, how large you want to make this circle, you can change exactly how it's affecting that. But so this is pretty good. This is a one and a half stop gradient that isn't affecting the middle and it goes out to the edges like that and this is why i like this a lot more than the vignette tool is just because you have such fine control over this you do sort of have that in the vignette tool but uh, in my opinion this is just a lot easier to see you can change the size of this circle or the the ellipse nature of it uh, that can be really handy depending on if you're using an anamorphic lens they don't always have a, a nice round spherical vignette to them uh, and you can use this creatively as well just to aff affect it or change it to the degree that you want so on this particular shot the vignette doesn't look bad um, but that was just you know an easy way to show you how we removed it the reason this becomes important is Let's say on shots like this one where so on this shot i i was panning and tilting a bit so we go from here i think i go down to her hands um and this is with my vignette corrections applied i'll show i did a little bit more here but watch if we turn all those off and now scrub through the footage it's almost like looking through a tunnel you know because the center is so bright it's almost like we're looking through a tube or something and in my opinion it becomes distracting for those kinds of cases where you have a lot of movement in the camera especially like yeah look at this you can really see it so we turn back on my vignette corrections and now that becomes so much less distracting in my opinion now we're just a little bit more absorbed 
in the the action of the scene and what's going on here so um and on this one i did a few things so this one has the first vignette correction that's that's really doing a lot of heavy lifting out there in the corners and then this second one is actually darkening the center because sometimes you you have a vignette that's just a little bit more complex than maybe one circular gradient can perfectly correct and so i did those two and then this one was just an additional sort of curves correction just to change exactly what the lighting looked like after those those two vignette corrections so uh you don't necessarily notice it really intensely when i turn them all on and off at once but um I, I find this to be just a really, really handy way to use power windows to correct lenses like this. And so now I effectively have this. Uh, this is the Laowa Argus 45 millimeter f0.95 lens. And so by using these power windows like this, we effectively have an f0.95 lens with virtually no vignetting, which is something that does not exist in the physical world. There is no such lens. All the... 0.95 lenses vignette heavily really heavily and so this is a really handy tool to be able to sort of create a look that otherwise cannot be created physically okay and just one more example here for good measure this is actually the most extreme example you're going to see of this because this was shot on my f0 camera which is an effective 67 millimeter f0.5 six it's an insanely shallow depth of field and you can see my wife has her legs crossed behind her and you know they they could be anything for all for all we know about this because they're just so out of focus and so this is shot on a really big you know heavy large format contraption with this huge bellows system and everything and it it benefits greatly from this technique so without the vignette control it looks like that right so super dark on the corners super bright in the middle and so we do the same technique that i just showed you with one additional piece to it um you know one is that uh we can get clever with the curves here just to make sure that everything stays consistent sometimes just a little extra curves adjustment is helpful but the real special sauce is over here in noise reduction so it's extremely light as you can see here just uh you know three percent temporal and and five percent spatial but what that does is it helps make up for the fact that if you're lifting really extreme shadows out of the corners you're going to be raising the noise floor as well and so just a tiny bit of noise reduction can really help to you know keep the image really clean um and so this is just something i i love i love shooting like this with these crazy fast lenses um you know you can even get super close like this and you get these just insane shots that are not strictly speaking possible to get in any other way um it's this really it's shot with a 500 millimeter 8 by 10 lens large format lens and so you get the field of view of a 67 millimeter lens with the depth of field of a 500 millimeter f4 lens which uh, if you do the math you can go to points and focus and chart out these things for yourself but that makes a 67 millimeter f0.6 and so here's another one where i got a little more creative you know brightening darkening doing a bunch of things um so here's without and here's with um so just just one more one more extreme example of why this this sort of power window vignette control tool has been super helpful for me. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.